Pronouns in the Workplace. Part 1. The Problem. Western culture has traditionally treated gender as binary. Someone has either a male or a female gender, and it stays the same over time. Our language reflects this in how we use pronouns. Someone is either a he or a she, and it's expected to be fixed, no matter what situation they are in. However, this doesn't capture the whole story. Gender expression is contextual. Rather than being a stable, unchanging characteristic, it can shift and evolve over time. For example, a person who identifies as non-binary, neither male nor female, or a combination of both, or trans, where their gender does not match the sex assigned to them at birth, might use different pronouns in different contexts, depending on where they are, who is nearby, and how safe they feel. In the workplace, hierarchies, power dynamics, and fear of repercussions can make the choice of what information to share about your identity complex and high stakes. According to the National Center for Transgender Equality, more than one in four transgender people in the United States have lost a job due to bias, and more than three in four have experienced some form of workplace discrimination. There can also be unintentional, but still harmful impacts. When someone is misgendered, meaning they are referred to with pronouns different from the ones they use, it can be distressing, difficult, and awkward to correct, especially in the moment. As we rely more on digital tools like Zoom, Slack, and Teams, it can be even more challenging to communicate clearly about gender and pronouns in the workplace. To address this issue, some workplace collaboration tools have started to integrate pronoun sharing features. In some cases, users can enter their own pronouns, and in others, they must choose from a pre-selected list. Their pronouns are then shown across the tool's user interface. But does this meet the needs of real people? Unfortunately, there isn't much research that software developers can look to for guidance. A team at Microsoft Research aimed to address this gap. Part 2. The Research to investigate pronoun sharing at work, an interdisciplinary team of anthropologists, gender study scholars, and software developers interviewed 78 people who worked in various industries, lived across 14 countries, and spoke seven different languages. This language diversity was important. When and how pronouns are gendered can be very different depending on the language being spoken. The disciplinary diversity of the research team was also essential. To create responsible socio-technical systems, research teams need to include a range of experts, including social scientists. 56% of the participants identified as trans or non-binary, about a quarter identified as LGBTQ and cisgender, and a quarter identified as straight and cisgender. Cisgender means their gender identity matches the sex they were assigned at birth. Rather than ticking through a highly structured list of questions, the interviews were open-ended. Afterward, the team looked for major themes and meaningful patterns. The interview surfaced three major findings. First, the choice to share pronouns involves a complex calculation driven by social context. Say an individual works in two different departments, and one department is extremely inclusive and accepting, and the other department, maybe people have verbally protested pronouns or maybe said derogatory things towards they, them, their pronouns. And so they're worried about, you know, using their pronouns in their inclusive department and hiding their pronouns in another department. Because responses to trans or non-binary identities can vary widely, participants had to choose whether and how to come out in each new social situation, even within the same workplace. Finding number two, workplace power dynamics make pronoun sharing more complex. When I was a contractor, I didn't really feel comfortable sharing my pronouns. I wasn't sure how much I wanted to risk that. It was only when I got converted to full-time that I started to speak up about it. I'm in the lowest power position possible, and that makes it very difficult to share pronouns. If you're being subjectively evaluated by someone who's transphobic or homophobic, and they read you the wrong way, they can just say that you look unprofessional. Within an organization, choices around sharing pronouns can be shaped by someone's relative power and seniority. And finding number three, Technology can facilitate the process of pronoun sharing, but it can also complicate it. Pronoun sharing features could help employees introduce themselves to new colleagues. It could also simplify the process of coming out. However, interview participants felt strongly that they want to know where their data is going and how it will be used now and in the future. They didn't want it used for targeted advertising or to automatically carry over into their permanent employment record. 
Most importantly, they do not want software to use data about them, including pronouns they've used in the past, to infer their current pronouns automatically. The most awful tool that I can imagine actually getting built would be something that infers pronouns and then discloses them without proper control over that. Part three, recommendations. The team came up with three design recommendations based on these interviews to guide the creation of pronoun sharing features in workplace software. Number one, to be effective, pronoun sharing must offer comprehensive individual customization around privacy, audience visibility, and storage. This includes an option to create one set of pronouns in a general profile that is seen across the workplace. However, individuals should be able to share different pronouns for different contexts, teams, or tools used. There should also be the option to use pronouns temporarily. This allows someone to come out in a specific context and know that their pronoun data won't be stored anywhere. Number two, it is important that pronoun sharing always be optional, never required. When software requests user pronouns, it should always be clear where that information is going and how it will be used, and there should be an option to not answer the question. While workplaces may request that pronouns be disclosed in the spirit of allyship, requiring it can have the opposite effect. It can alienate employees for whom disclosure might be more complex. Number three, success should be measured by how well pronoun sharing features support self-expression and user safety, not by feature adoption rate. Traditionally, software designers look at how many people are using a feature to measure its success. However, that metric doesn't make sense for pronoun sharing, since users may choose not to share their pronouns in certain situations. Having the flexibility to participate or not is actually a sign of success. Instead, designers should look at the extent to which pronoun sharing features support individual users' needs regardless of whether or not they opt into using these features in all contexts. Feeling supported is the metric for success not adoption. The team's research highlights that pronoun sharing in the workplace is about autonomy and self-expression. The sharing of pronouns is a highly complex and contextual decision that can only be made by the individual themselves. Pronoun sharing is never over. New mixes of people and places can require rethinking how we read others' gender and what we share about our own gender identity. It's essential that software designers work together with the trans and non-binary communities to create workplace tools that reflect and support this real world complexity.